HP DL360 series server. In order to open, just unlock this, slide it, just lift the cover up. Inside the server, this is RAM and CPU section. So here is my CPU 1 and this is the CPU 2. Slot is empty right now. Whenever you want to install the CPU, you will simply unlock this, lift this up, and here you can install the CPU. Right now, the CPU slot is empty, so it is protected already. You don't need to do anything here. This is closed right now. Now, if I talk about RAM, so this section is for uh, the RAM of this particular CPU, and this section is also for the RAM of this particular CPU. So the CPU is not installed, so we will cover this like this. And you can see here, this is blank CPU right now, and here the CPU is installed. Right now, this is Intel Xeon CPU. RAM has to be installed in the proper channel of the CPU. So with this particular CPU, I want to install 64 GB of RAM. 32 GB RAM will be installed in one channel and 32 GB will be installed in another channel. So channel starts with the white slot here, and then you can install backward. So for example, this is my first RAM. So I'll be installing my first RAM over here in this first white channel here. And this is again 16 GB RAM. Here it is mentioned 16 GB RAM. So I'll be installing this on another channel over here. So make sure that the RAM is installed in a proper way. Now, if I only want to install 32 GB, then 16 GB is here and 16 GB is here. These are two more RAMs, which is 16 GB and 16 GB. So I'll be installing this RAM over here in the second slot here and from here also I'll be installing it in the second slot. You can see here there are four channels for this CPU and four channels for this CPU and in one channel I have installed 32 GB RAM in second channel 32 GB RAM. CPU is already installed tightened with the screw you don't need to do anything here at this place you have the CMOS battery is there if the new one has to be installed after every two years you must. Here you have the SD card slot here are all the fans. These fans are installed to suck cold air from the front and it cools down the RAM and processor and then the air glows out from here. Here you can see these are the power supply units. So here in case you want to remove it, so you can simply slide it. 460 watts. The installation is simple. Simply slide it from here and that's it. Here is the DVD drive. As far as motherboard is concerned, this complete is motherboard. Here at this place, I have installed additional network card. So this network card is four port network card. Total eight ports are there. I'm using this for the virtualization and I'm also using this as a router. So this is my home lab server. I'm using this for Proxmox. Total 256 GB of RAMs that I'll be installing in this server. I'll be simply closing this now. You can see this is the exhaust here. And open this, slide it, that's it. All right, so this is the front of the server and here you can see these are 10K SAS drive, 300 GB and this is also 300 GB RAID 1. And here also this is 900 GB and 900 GB, this is also RAID 1. So two drives I have installed separately. One is for the operating system, another is for the storage. Both are done through the RAID controller and these are extra slots. These are the blank slots. Take this out, get the SAS drive, put the SAS drive here inside and in order to Take out the SAS drive, you simply need to push this button and pull this out, slide this out and that's it. So this is the SAS drive, this way you can install it back. But once you have removed it from the slot where it was installed initially, you have to put it back at the same place if the server is already configured. When you are configured it for the first time, you can of course put it in any slot that you want. If it is already configured, when you remove it and if you don't put it back on the same slot, you might lose all the data. It's hot swap. So while the server is running in RAID, you can remove one drive. The fault tolerance is there. So only one drive can be replaced at a time. If this drive fails, so the data is available here. So you have to immediately replace this. And here also, this drive is also mirrored. So in case it is configured as RAID 1, so here also you can configure, you can remove it. But in RAID 0, so these two drives are working as a one drive. So if one fails, the entire logical volume will fail. If a RAID 1 plus 0 is used, which means that you will be using all four drives of the same size together to create the RAID, it becomes RAID 1 0, which means that you will be taking the benefit of RAID 0 also, and you will be taking the benefit of RAID 1 as well. So which means that at a time, two opposite drives can fail, which means that if one of the RAID 0 fails, 
So still you have another RAID 0 configured. And if one of the RAID 1 drive fails, so another drive is taking care of it. So at a time, two drive of different RAIDs can fail, but two drives of same RAID should not fail. So this way you have to see which type of RAID you are configuring. Of course, this is hardware setup. I'll explain you in the software setup. So this is the server information. So if you take this out, you can see power supplied information here. And these are all the CPU 1 and CPU 2 related information what RAM is installed inside the slot and all of that is available here. Here you can see the server information, server uh, serial number and part number is available here. Other slots are there, USB port is there, UID of the server is there in case you want to turn this on while you are working on this when you are doing the installation. And on top you can see the serial number again. The back side of server you can see this was the new network card which I installed. This was pre-installed by HP when I bought it, RS-232. This is your VGA port. These are all your USB cables. USB ports are there. Keyboard or mouse is connected here. And here you have two power supplies. If you have uh, one coming from one power source, another coming from another power source, if one power supply fails, another is taking care of it. So both the power supplies can be connected together at the same time. Now I'll be plugging in two cables here in order to do the server setup. So I'll be plugging in the VGA cable here, which is already connected to my monitor. And here is monitor and now I'll be also connecting the power supply here. Now I'll show you from the front side. So it is preparing the server right now and it will automatically turn on, you can see. And there is noise because it is checking all the fans. So ILO is also configured. ILO is helping you to see the console of this. Instead of monitor, you can directly see the console through the web user interface. You can press F11 to change the boot order or F9 to go into setup or F10 for the server provision. So it will start booting from the CD-ROM if the first boot is CD-ROM. Otherwise, it will continue to the operating system. Here you can see I'm using Proxmox here. So it has started loading Proxmox. So it is not clearly visible to you, but I'll be simply typing root. And here you go. So one particular uh, pair of disk, which is 300 GB RAID 1. So Proxmox is installed directly here. And this particular pair, which is RAID 1 to again 900 GB, this has been used as the Proxmox additional storage. So I can simply turn it off by pressing this. So it will automatically send the shutdown command to the server and it will turn off automatically. You don't need to do anything in case you want to shut it down. So this has already turned off and you can see the amber light here. Amber light means that the server is already getting the power supply, but it is turned off as of now.